Um, I am Matt Kennedy, um, and I am one of the IHS's uh, external postdoctoral fellows. Here I received my PhD uh, at Sydney in 2017 uh, and ended up coming here to uh, finish up some work that I have been working on, I guess, in between finishing up the thesis and now and then to begin some, uh, some other new and exciting work as well. So it's been a good year. It aims to bring together conversations that um, imperial historians on the one hand uh, and historians of Australia's colonial regimes in the Southern Pacific on the other hand have been telling about two particular places in the world, um, mostly Australian Papua and B British West Africa. Um, namely that these two places, there are special conditions that render the model of colonial governance um, that has been operating uh, by and large throughout the world uh, inadequate. Um, this project wants to look at both of these places not as individual places in which these problems exist but actually as related um, inherently to one another. Um, and what I mean by that is that administrators in the Australian colonial world are speaking to administrators in the British colonial world about this very issue and specifically about these territories. Um, now, in general, the literature doesn't tend to see these two territories as actually related in this way. The literature tends to focus on British West Africa, on the one hand, full stop, or on uh, the Australian South Pacific, um, full stop. And um, I think that a lot of the literature that has done that is incredibly valuable, uh, but I'm hoping to combine those two conversations uh, to reveal what I call a sort of transcolonial project of scientific governance. And it's an interesting project for many reasons. First of all, because um, administrators are taking their own initiative to, first of all, develop practices of scientific governance, or so it's called in Australian Papua first. Uh, but they're also reaching out to each other, either directly or through uh, middle institutions and middlemen um, and actual uh, sort of institutions and administrative structures in London uh, to affect uh, their um, strategies of government um, and also to learn from one another about conditions. Um, and why this is interesting is because this is not simply uh, within the British world that this conversation eventually happens. Um, as the 19th century turns into the 20th, and especially after the First World War, um, suddenly international organizations become very interested in this question. Um, and it's mostly because of the ex-German colonies, which become mandates, and in many places they become mandates either to Australian colonial administration or to British colonial administration in addition to other European government governments. Um, these new administrations um, are roughly based on what they are understanding to be the cutting edge, especially for Class C mandates. Um, what that means effectively is that governments in Class C mandates more or less take scientific governance and try to apply it also to mandate governance, um, which in essence takes something that has been uh, transcolonial within the British world, but still transcolonial, and transforms it into an international conversation um, because the reports go to uh, not only uh, mandate governments, but they also go back to the Permanent Mandates Commission in Geneva. Uh, the Permanent Mandates Commission in Geneva synthesizes these, repackages it, presents it to uh, other colonial powers for use in their own uh, mandates, um, and furthermore, um, because of a particular revision in the way that um, economic and social knowledge about the world is constructed at the time, um, they're put into effectively a library of authorities that continues to be cited not only by the Permanent Mandates Commission but by other league bodies about tricky problems that a long time ago these colonial administrations tried to solve through scientific governance. So one of the reasons why I'm so grateful to the IHS is that um, over the course of the year, um, I've received just ample time and wonderful support from a number of colleagues, um, both in the department and outside the department, um, who um, have helped in a number of ways uh, develop not, not only this project, but several other projects. Um, 
and uh, I hope to continue a lot of these collaborations in future. A uh, member of the department and I have submitted um, a, uh, an NEH uh, collaborative grant for a conference coming up, um, hopefully in 2020. We'll see if we actually win it or not. Um, and uh, been given the opportunity to uh, guest lecture and also have seen a couple of uh, the different university special collections that I didn't know existed until other colleagues have um, put me on the right path there. So um, all in all, it's been a wonderful year for my own project development. I've made some good friends here, um, and I hope to retain connections here for a very long time. I'm happy to say um, that largely because of the time that I've been able to have here, um, I've uh, managed to um, be successful in a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellowship grant, uh, which I'll take up at the University of Sussex uh, to work with Alan Lester. Um, and uh, that will be great fun, and that will also be more or less devoted to uh, further refining um, the project um, about uh, scientific governance, the League of Nations, and international discourses of economic order.